Hey YouTube, Ace Pinkter here again. And today we're going to take a look at Reason's import MIDI file function. Okay, if you haven't used this before, it's, uh, it's a good way to kind of accelerate the process. What I typically use it for is, um, actually the, the reason I want to show this is because it will give you a great way to practice. Uh, if you are not too good at actually composing your own um, masterpieces just yet, importing a MIDI file will kind of uh, give you a head start. You can just use other people's notes. We're not going to pretend that we wrote the song or anything, but we're going to use them and we're going to play around with the uh, settings that we get here until we get really good at uh, making these instruments sound good. Basically, uh, what I want to say is it's it's a way for you to practice your instrumentation and not have to not have to worry about you know um, the actual music, not have to worry about the notes. We're just going to worry about knobs, buttons, and all kinds of other settings. So, when you first import your file, you're going to find that it'll produce a whole bunch of blank not blank tracks, but a whole bunch of sequencer tracks that don't assign to anything. All right, this is good. It gives us the freedom to choose our own instruments. Now, if you want to remix Johnny Be Good to be played on a pipe organ or an accordion, hey, go for it. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to try and keep it as uh, simple, and I'm going to try and choose the instruments that they laid out for me. Now, just for the purposes of this tutorial. Now, you do have the freedom to choose whatever instruments you want, like I said, but I'm going to go along with it so you get an idea of what, what you can and can't do. So, um, what I also do is, uh, say for example, you get a track that doesn't have these, these little headers here, which will happen pretty frequently. It'll just say like track 1, track 2, track 3. It'll leave you in the dark. Create a subtractor, uh, just, just to be, you know, fast. And play your track. And you can kind of gather from the melody what type of instrument is supposed to go in there. Um, obviously, if you see chords, it's probably a stringed instrument. Um, you know, you can't play chords on a flute and so on. So I'm going to go and try to find some instruments that will work for me. This says steel guitar, so I'm going to choose AC steel double. And you know what? I'm going to use two of these. And notice uh, when you create a track, it's going to leave, you're going to have an empty sequencer track in here. I'm just going to change this one's uh, output to match my new, my new NNXT. And make sure you clean up by deleting your old tracks. Now I'm going to assign instruments to the rest. Okay, so I skipped ahead there, and I just went and assigned one instrument for every track that we have data on. Now, um, there's a few things you'll want to pay attention to. Um, notice, uh, I made that change, but uh, notice in in the in the songs that I've read, start over in the song that I've got. There's very little velocity information. Okay, um, for example, this flute. If I skip ahead, there's no real velocity information whatsoever. It's flat all the way across. Okay, and um, you'll probably have to make those changes. I'm not sure if I did that or not. No, I guess not. It does have some flute data or some velocity data, but for the most part you'll find that there are a lot of uh, MIDI composers out there that really half-ass it. And, you know, for whatever reason, the songs just don't sound very good, and typically uh, the lack of information is one of the reasons. Also notice that there are there are a lot of um, control settings that your, your MIDI track might contain which will be imported, and they might not be imported properly. Um, I tend to go through and take a look for anything that's highlighted in green, and if it's something that's going to really screw the sound up, like, uh, you know, I think this index was automated, um, I'll clear it, and I'll just remove that automation and make my own if I have to. This track has its, uh, it has its own volume automated here. I'm going to leave that. I think the only place it actually has an effect is at the very end. No, I take that back. There is no real effect for this whatsoever, so... It's entirely up to you. You might just want to start from scratch and clear out any of the automation data. If not, at least get an idea of where the big changes are. So, um, being that we have these very flat sounding instruments, we're going to do a few things to kind of uh, make them come alive. And these are just the very basic steps. <clears throat> so, let's take a look. I've got strings here that sound like this. Fast forward.
Now strings tend to sound pretty good with a bit of unison. And that's going to make it sound like there's more than one, more than one string instrument playing. Another thing you can do that's really quick and effective, duplicate the track and transpose it by a full octave. Or you can use fifths or sevenths. But very simply, we then have two strings playing, and they sound pretty good. They're immediately in harmony. Now, I was pretty fortunate. Uh, this came alive pretty easily. A lot of these instruments sound pretty good. You may have to go through and add effects to, to get the desired thing. You might have to filter some of your tracks, distort other tracks, reverb, and so on. I'd advise you to stay away from reverb for now because we're going to use that in our second half when we talk about mastering your track. So, uh, once again, uh, first step, import your MIDI files. Second step, choose your instrumentation and assign each track. Make sure you clean up after yourself. And then begin uh, tweaking your knobs to get, the, uh, to get close to the desired effect. Um, this is you know, just the first run here. We'll, we'll patch it up as, as we listen to it each time. We'll find little things to change. And I want to talk right now a uh, quick word about volume leveling. You'll find this to be very important. And here's a neat trick that um, some mastering engineers, uh, I read some books about it, and this is one of the things they do. Take your master volume on your main mixer, and we're going to put it very low. Let's say... I'm going to leave it at uh, 3, maybe even 2. All right, I'm going to put my master volume at 2 so we can barely hear this thing. And I'm looping my sequencer between two very busy parts of the song, songs where there's a lot going on. Uh, in fact, every instrument is actually playing right here. So what we do now that we have the volume low, and I'm not using any treble or, or bass settings, but uh, eventually we will fill these all up. I'm going to start raising the volume just until I can barely make it out. Now you might have to turn up your, your volume on your on your PC speakers for this, but when you do it at your own instrument, you'll know what I'm talking about. You just want to be able to pick that instrument out so that you can tell it's playing even if you can't really make out what note it is. See, this is a lot of high frequencies in this bell, and it's coming through even at a much lower volume, which is why you can't just go off of the dB meter. You really have to use your ears. This one needs to be loud. And I can barely hear my bass, but I'm going to trust that that's working out. So now that we crank up the volume, make a few slight adjustments. We have it. We have a, a pretty decent volume leveling effect, and that wasn't too difficult to achieve. So, um, probably the next step is going to be uh, choosing some sends. We're going to use reverb as our first effect, and there's good reason for that, which we'll get to in the second phase. Um, I would uh, recommend that you create an advanced reverb if you haven't already. I use these three in these three uh, effects in every one of my tracks, so I just set this up as my te template. And we're going to move right along. Now that we've got that covered, I don't think there's anything else to uh, to get here. Um, there are some things you'll want to watch out for that your MIDI tracks are probably going to contain information for, like your attack, decay, sustain, release. Your envelopes are going to be affected by whatever you import, so you may have to go over and double check to make sure that there's no settings that are going to screw everything up. Adjust them if you have to. And um, 